Hey guys, welcome back to more political chatter. In this video, we will be talking about Donald Trump's control over the Republican Party. So, uh, through these midterms, we have seen uh, m many of mo the vast majority of the Trump endorsements, the candidates in the gubernatorial primaries, in the Senate primaries, in the House primaries, that Donald Trump have endorsed winning. We have seen that across the board in so many different states from Arizona to Connecticut. And um, Donald Trump has done well in 2022. It is almost the best that he could have hoped for, for his endorsements, because he really does have total control over this party and his endorsements show that. Even the most unelectable candidates in the primary, from J.D. Vance to Doug Mastriano, uh, even though they were so unelectable and voters knew that and their opponents made it clear, because Donald Trump endorsed them, they won. This has happened numerous times. For example, in Connecticut, um, in the Republican primary for Senate, Themis Claritus actually had a shot against Blumenthal, the incumbent, and all voters knew that. But because Trump came in two days before the primary and endorsed Leora Levy, Levy won, who has a much more extreme position on every issue and is therefore unelectable in the state of Connecticut. But looking at this little, um, little uh, graphic uh, NPR gives us, which is actually extremely helpful, these are just all the races. Uh, this first graph here is all the races. Uh, House, Senate, and governor so in um like attorney general and stuff like that and state treasurer but those are very few those are you know very few of these endorsements looking at the incumbents uh donald trump's D john donald trump uh, sorry of the incumbents running again donald trump um has won 99 percent of the time 152 out of the 153 incumbents that donald trump endorsed have won their primary, which is absolutely insane. All but one. That one being Madison uh, Cawthorn uh, in North Carolina, who was running for re-election in the House and had numerous scandals behind his name. Yes, 152 out of 153. That blows my mind. Challengers, not so much. However, if we're looking at it, Donald Trump endorsed 153 uh, incumbents. He endorsed 10 challengers. Six of the challengers lost. Therefore, only four of them won, which is honestly still good numbers, saying that these are challengers facing the incumbent of the party. Um, and in open races, where we have two new, uh, you know, new can all new candidates running, no incumbents in this race, these numbers are amazing. 91 percent because yes of course the incumbent is going to win and of course the challenger is going to lose but in a race with no incumbents this is great numbers for donald trump it just shows you how much control he has over the party 91 percent of his endorsements in open races and it's a good number of open races too 45 he has won 91 percent of the time he's lost seven percent of the time I have no idea what this gray bar means. But that just shows you how good Donald Trump is doing. 99% for incumbents. 40% for challengers, which again is pretty good. But 91% for open races. Yes, when there's all new candidates, a whole new field, the voters went with Donald Trump because he is Donald Trump. That is astonishing. In the House races, let's just take a quick look. He, th for the incumbents he has endorsed in the House, 130 of, out of 131 uh, have won. Of course, Cawthorn is that one that lost. Out of the challengers, he has only endorsed six. Very small numbers. But look at that. Four of the out of the six challengers have won. Yes, 67% of the challengers he's, he has endorsed have won. That is insane to me. That the majority of the challengers he has won in the House have won. And in the open races, um, his numbers are less good, actually. Uh, only 2% less good from the all candidates. Uh, 89% in the House races, which is still great. 
For U.S. Senate incumbent, 10 out of 10. And open races, 9 out of 10. Um, the only one, the, uh, the gray bar, I have no idea what that means, honestly, because it's not yellow. Um, and then, so this is like governors and such, and like state races, state, so like attorney general, state treasurer. 12 out of 12 wins, zero out of four wins, which is, which is horrible for him, and pretty surprising, honestly, but still only four. In open races, 16 out of 17. I'm really surprised. But it really does make sense for the challenge, for the challengers because voters are much less partisan when it comes to their governor um, and, you know, state executive and such. So rather than who they're sending to Washington so that so that those numbers do make sense. So I just wanted to share that with you. And then let's take a look at each individual race. Now, don't go anywhere. We're just going to go through examples. Arizona. Carrie Lake is clearly the most unelectable candidate. She burns masks at rallies during COVID. Well, a little bit after COVID, actually. Um, she is, you know, very much against uh, Roe v. Wade. She believes the election was stolen, and she makes that very, very clear. She's obviously the most unelectable candidate. And Karen Taylor Robson was endorsed by the very popular governor, Doug Ducey. But did they? But did Arizona Republicans go with Ducey? No, they went with Trump. They did not even go with their own governor. They went with Donald Trump and, uh, and nominated Carrie Lake, where Karen Taylor Robson would have absolutely demolished Katie Hobbs, the Democratic nominee. Carrie Lake, well not, she, I have her winning by tilt margin right now. This would be an incredibly close race. In Ohio, Josh Mandel, uh, Matt Dolan, Mike Gibbons all made it very clear that J.D. Vance was not electable in numerous debates. But who does Trump endorse? J.D. Vance. Therefore, J.D. Vance win wins this race by 9%, winning most of the counties. And in Maryland's gubernatorial primary, Dan Cox... Uh, is an election denier. Do we think an election denier is going to possibly have any shot in Maryland? No. Kelly Schultz, on the other hand, like in Arizona, was endorsed by the extremely popular governor, Larry Hogan. I believe the third most popular governor in America, if I'm correct. Hogan endorsed Schultz. Schultz, actually. But who do Maryland Republicans go with? Not Hogan, not their governor with Donald Trump, and they and, and they nominate Dan Cox. Not saying that Kelly Schultz could have had any chance against Westmore, the Democrat, but Dan Cox certainly does not. Schultz would have made it at least a little close. In Connecticut, I mentioned this race um, a little bit earlier. In the Senate primary, Themis Claritus could have uh, narrowed it down to a likely margin in the general election against Richard Blumenthal. But who do voters go with? They go with Leora Levy, who, who is extremely pro-life, ran ads during the primary that voters are going to remember saying how conservative she is. And I don't know this for a fact, but probably believes the election was stolen too. Leora Levy is not winning. Themis Claritus would have made it at least just a little bit closer. But Leora Levy, no shot. And then we have Pennsylvania. Let's start in their gubernatorial primary. Sorry about those ads. Uh, Lou Barletta would have put up a very good fight against Josh Shapiro. I'm not saying he would have won. He definitely could have. But Doug Mastriano can certainly not win. Doug Mastriano is the worst candidate they could have nominated after. Uh, between him, Barletta, Bill McSwain, uh, Dave White, Melissa Hart, and then minor candidates also. He is the most unelectable. He was at January 6th, and if Trump did not endorse him, do we think Mastriano would have won? No, because they know, because they would, you know, they, without Trump's endorsement, they would realize that he is not electable, and he cannot win against Josh Shapiro. They would have realized that Lou Barletta went, can, Bill McSwain can, Dave White can. Um, but all because Donald Trump said vote for 
Doug Mastriano. Pennsylvania Republicans voted for Doug Mastriano. And finally, the most important of all, because of how ra- how close this race is, and it proves uh, due to this closeness that if Trump hadn't endorsed Dr. Oz, then he would not have won that po- that extra 0.1%, and therefore Dave McCormick would have won. Dave McCormick, I can guarantee you, would have been beating John Fetterman right now. Okay, in my mind, that is almost a fact. I certainly believe that Dave McCormick would have much better of a shot against John Fetterman in this race right now than uh, Dr. Oz, you know, is doing right now. Dr. Oz is, I'm not saying he's a horrible candidate because he's not, and I could see this race going to to Dr. Oz come November, but too many voters especially rural Republicans, too many rural Republicans who are happy about voting for Doug Mastriano are not in support of Dr. Oz because they view him as a corporate sellout, someone who's in the TV uh, industry, someone who doesn't work for the common man. Though A lot of them will view uh, Doug Mastriano as someone who fights for the common man. Believe me, I drove through, um, when uh, I was on vacation this summer, we drove through rural Pennsylvania, like a legany kind of like very rural Pennsylvania. And we stopped at a shop. This is all a true story. I know it like sounds fake, but I guarantee it's true. Uh, an antique shop. And, you know, this is very rural. The people uh, were conservative. The shop owners, we were talking to them, they were, super, they were extremely conservative. And you know what? They had a big, um, how do I say, uh, I don't, they, uh, I just say a bunch, they had a bunch of Doug Mastriano signs, which said, take one, exclamation mark. A bunch of Doug Mastriano little cards that, you know, to hand out. And a bunch of Doug Mastriano bumper stickers. Did I see one item for Dr. Oz that you can take? No, I did not. I didn't see any Dr. Oz yard signs in their shop. I didn't see any Dr. Oz bumper stickers. I didn't see any Dr. Oz cards. A lot of rural voters are going to happily vote for Doug Mastriano, and not so, and not really. A lot, most of them will vote for Dr. Oz, but they certainly won't be happy about it. And I just realized that has nothing to do with Trump's endorsement. But anyway, that wraps up today's video. I just wanted to prove that Donald Trump still has complete control over the Republican Party. So thank you all for watching this video. Make sure to tune in to tonight's live stream a, a debate between myself, the political chatter, and Minnesota Predictions. We will be debating over ranked choice voting. Um, Minnesota Predictions is not in favor of ranked choice voting, and I am. I want to convince him that ranked choice voting is a good thing and that we need it. So be there. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.